Today we are at Warra Farms. I am going to be talking with Rob. He's going to be giving us a bit of a 101 to biodynamic farming. So Rob, um, tell us a bit about Warra Farms. So Warra was set up in the mid-1960s by a German couple, Carl and Hannah Law. Um, they wanted to, um, to create a space for people with intellectual disabilities to have a meaningful vocational community life. Uh, hence Warra was started. Um, the idea you know, of, of providing, of having a community that can provide for its own needs as well. So a small farm started here um, out of a biodynamic impulse. Um, that was 50 some odd years ago and um, the farm's gone through many peaks and troughs since then. Um, we're fairly productive at the moment. Um, yeah, we have, we have uh, about 45 adult residents, I think, on site at the minute, and another four homes in the community, all housing people with intellectual disability. And we have um, about 70 adults that come in for different day programs, and we have a school with about 20 pupils as well. So we grow a wide range of things. Um, we specialise in leafy greens, salads, uh, brassicas, um, all those kind of fancy leafy lettuces and stuff. Um, and we sell that through our shop and we've got also several co-ops um, around in the city in the Blue Mountains and we do a couple of farmers markets as well. So when did Biodynamic actually start? In, in the 1920s Rudolf Steiner was, was asked by a bunch of uh, farmers to give some insights into, into agriculture. People were concerned with the way that agriculture was going and um, the industrialisation of agriculture, you know, or many of the same concerns that we've got now. You know, that's a hundred years ago, people were having those concerns. Um, Rudolf Steiner came up with some, some pretty interesting insights, um, developed um, you know, a, a certain methodology that then those farmers in that room in, went off to practice, uh, which has now sort of become a movement, which is biodynamic agriculture. So it's, I guess, many people are familiar with organic agriculture and what that, that means. So, you know, no, the use of no herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, using only organic inputs. So biodynamics covers all of those things, but uh, it differs in that it's sort of looking at the farm in relation to the cosmos. So it's looking at the deeper, sort of more holistic approach to, to farming and our place within that. Why is biodynamic farming so important to you? When I realised there was a branch of agriculture out there that took into account those sort of forces that we can't necessarily perceive, the sort of the nature spirits and the, the yeah, the, the world beyond the physical. Like the, you know, you can see a plant growing. It's not. It's not just the green thing sticking out of the ground, which is supported by the brown stuff on the floor. Like there's, there's a lot of things that are happening in that relationship. Um, so I guess when I discovered that there was a, a branch of agriculture out there that kind of looked towards a more um, spiritual approach and towards a more sensitive approach to to how we work with the land, um, it's sort of sort of piqued my interest. Can you tell me a bit more about the importance of um, the cow horn and also how it's um, worked into the process of biodynamic farming? We, we make our own preparations here with the cow horns. So there's two preparations that, that use the horns. There's preparation 500 and 501. So preparation 500 is um, the horn manure preparation, it's also called. So we take, um, we take a number of cow horns, um, we fill them with, with the manure um, and then we bury them over autumn and winter. The, the reason that we use the horn, um, it's, a, it's an instrument of digestion. It's connected to the, the cow's digestive tract. And it's, um, so the cow being an, a, an animal that's always in a digestive sort of moment as well, the horn carries the essence of that digestion still with it after it's left the cow. The manure itself during that period of time as it's buried in the in the horn over the earth's digestive period of autumn and winter, it transforms from that sort of sticky, smelly cow manure into this rich colloidal choppity substance. Um, it's then rhythmically stirred for an hour. We do that four times a year on the farm. We stir it for an hour in rainwater. The rainwater sort of takes on the essence of, of that material. Um, and as we spray that out across the farm, it's returning that sort of, that substance back to the earth so it's taken it from its earthly form 
putting it through water to its water form, putting it through the air into its air form and returning it to its earthly form once again. So it's closing that cycle. In polarity to that we do the quartz preparation, the silica, that's 501. Again, it's buried in the horn, um, but that's done over summer and spring and summer. And the, the quartz is sprayed in sort of the polarity to, to the corn manure, so generally the morning after. Um, and that's sprayed at a fine mist. And so the quartz is working really with the light element, whereas the, five, the 500, the horn manure, is working with the, from a soil, from an earthy perspective. So 500 is going to improve your fertility, it's going to increase soil biota, it's going to increase the humus content of your soil, it's going to increase moisture retention. Um, it's also just a lovely thing to do. The 501 is about looking at the light elements, so it's going to greatly reduce the amount of fungal problems that you have. Um, it's going to bring in more light, more warmth. There are physical benefits that you see. It's not about just a bunch of hippies standing under a tree, stirring something for an hour and then spraying it out in our sandals and our caftans. There's, there's a practical element to it too. Um, I think if we're eating food that's grown with a conscious input, then we're going to be imbued with at least a bit of that. Um, so I think if, if we had more farms, if we had more access to this produce, if the supermarkets didn't have a massive hold on, on the price and the cost and, and the way that it's all moved about, then I think we could see a massive shift in, in our, just our sense of being, our sense of wellness.